Hi everyone, hope you are doing good. My name is Saurabh Bharti, Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional. This is my YouTube channel where I come and share my knowledge and experience with you all. So without further uh, delay, let's start the today's topic. So today I'm going to start a new series for Microsoft Dynamics 365 functional consultant profile. So I have been talking about a lot uh, on product features and the functionalities. And if you remember, I have created a video that what should be your learning path for becoming a functional consultant. So because in my opinion, the functional consultant is not only about the product knowledge. There are a lot of other things which a functional consultant should focus on and uh, skill themselves. So uh, I, I'm going to put that uh, uh, video in the description. You can go and watch that. So this was a very long pending topic, which I was thinking that uh, I should talk about. So I'm starting this. This is the first part of this, and I'm going to create a lot more content on this. And this here, I will be sharing my experience and knowledge that as a functional consultant, what are the things which I do and what I have experienced, right? So <clears throat> the why it took me time to uh, start this series is very simple reason because I I was thinking like, how do I present my content and where do I start? So, but uh, I'm taking this start now. And what I thought is that the first step for me to start uh, talking about the functional consultant journey is understanding a project implementation phase. So which means like when I get into a project as a functional consultant, what are the different phases of the project I am going uh, to work on, right, is, is very important for me to understand. So that's what is the starting point. And later on, I'm going to break down each and every phase and each and every activity in that specific phase and talk about that, how do I uh, perform those action and the activities uh, during the implementation. So let's start. So let me move to the next slide. So I was thinking like, uh, how do I explain you the uh, project phases? Uh, most of us know that how the project methodology or any any project typically what are the phases which we have but what should be the starting point for me to explain you in a better way <clears throat> so then uh, if you all know that microsoft dynamics uh, 365 has a implementation guide by microsoft Dyn uh, microsoft itself and that guide is called a success by design so what i thought is it's a it's a good to start from that particular implementation guide because that is what is recommended by Microsoft as well. So as per the success by design uh, implementation guide, uh, any implementation, the project which we go through has a four different phases. And these phases are uh, initiate and then implement and prepare and then operate, right? A lot of people might call you initiate as a discovery phase, analysis phase, right? Uh, then you might have the implementation implement phase might be called a design and build phase, right? So, 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 uh, or, 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 or the prepare phase is your testing and uh, preparing for the go live and operate is like once you go live and then how do you uh, manage or do the maintenance post go live? What are the activities you perform? But as per the success by design phases, right, these are the four, four different phases which are there. And uh, if you all know that uh, Microsoft Dynamics uh, 365, every implementation also has an opportunity to interact with the Microsoft Fast Track team, where the Microsoft Fast Track team comes and evaluate your uh, solution at each and every phase. And they do the different types of reviews which you produce as an output. So if I talk about the initiate phase here, so the initiate phase is basically where you go to the customer as a functional consultant and you start uh, talking about their current business process 
as a result you are start uh, gathering the requirements and what do they exactly need okay <clears throat> it is basically based on their edges process like what they are doing right now and uh, what are the pain points and things are there now how do we perform the requirement uh, analysis and requirement gathering i'm going to talk about that very specifically in one of the video so it is just an high level that what each phase looks like and what we do it we also talk about the project governance like okay what is going to be my project structure who uh, who is going to who is going to be accountable for which area right so all these things we define in the project governance and the structure right we also perform the fit gap analysis uh, during this phase so that what the requirements which we have captured right uh, <clears throat> are they uh, are they possible in the system out of the box or do we need to do some modification customer kick off and all these things so so there is a one specific document review as per the success wide design which happens it's part of this phase is your solution blueprint review because you know your requirement you have done your fit cap analysis so that is what you do it in the implementation phase you know your this gaps and everything so you do your configurations you 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 do your development you do your data modeling uh, uh, <clears throat> integration data migration strategy security uh, uh analytics and reporting so all these things are done and planned in your implementation phase right which is also called a design and build phase <clears throat> so once that is done then you move to the next phase which is prepare which is generally called as deploy phase uh, where you do the uat and you do the uh, accept and testing with your users you plan for the go live uh, you see the user readiness do your cutover planning that when you are transitioning from the old system to a, a new system how it is going to work right and as an output of this phase is the basic milestone is to have the go live readiness review okay so these are the different workshops which are your success by design review workshops which are highlighted in a different color here based on the activities you perform in each and every phase then you go live which is a operate phase where you check about the solution health uses maintenance and also the user support which you do post go live if they are getting any issues in the system and that is what is like as a as a, as a review uh, success by design you do the post go live readiness review so these are th this th these are the major uh, phases or the implementation phases are uh, recommended by success by design implementation guide by microsoft so uh, i'm going to talk about each and every phase in detail in the future videos but for you to understand that what are the implementation phases which we have in any project right so this is what we we have it if i move to the next one now once you so now these these are the different phases for your implementation but for every implementation it is very important for us to choose the methodology okay now when we talk about the methodology we generally get confused about the phase uh, between the phases and the methodology so the phases which we have talked about uh, about the project implementation is like these are the different set of activities you do it right but how do you do it right what is the approach as a team as an organization you are going to take to execute these phases is is your project methodology so you need to choose a right project methodology <clears throat> there are different methodologies available and when you work as a functional consultant with any organization many times every organization has its own way or own methodology to execute each and every project so it is good to uh, good to understand your organization methodology for any implementation uh, uh, any implementation project okay so if i talk about what uh, what is the benefit which you get it if you do the uh, if you if you if you follow any methodology so methodology helps you to plan your things ahead so you know in which phase what activity by whom it is going to be performed and what is the impact right 
you know your uh, road so set clear expectation around start and end date of the project milestone when i'm going to start my design and build phase it is clearly defined based on your methodology when i'm going to finish my testing user acceptance testing it is defined clearly in the methodology right the next thing which you have is like where it helps you if you have a good methodology is that there are no surprises because each and everything based on your methodology all the component during the implementation you are planning ahead okay get the uh, get there faster so take advantage of strategies that uh, saves the time so if there is as per your methodology if there are things which you can plan ahead and in a better way and efficient way uh it it is going to help you to get there faster okay avoid pitfalls so minimize the risk uh cost and scope creeps with the proven best practices from the agents of the employees which which you have already which have already followed your methodology in the organization you have already uh, done the multiple implementation in his in 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 your previous experience right so that based on those experience you can also avoid the pitfalls if you follow a methodology if you do not follow the methodology uh, if you do not have any project implementation methodology uh, you are going to face the serious challenges while executing a project so i'm sure you are very clear that what are the project phases and what is the difference between methodology the project phases are the cycle the the implementation cycle you can say it but the way you have to execute those phases is driven from your methodology hope that's clear let's move to the next one uh if i talk about what are the different types of methodologies available so basically uh, there are three different possible type of methodologies which are there uh if first first of all all these uh, methodology you need not as a function consultant you are not going to design the methodology for sure but you should be aware that when you join an organization you should connect with your uh, uh key stakeholders uh, or in the organization who can explain you about that what methodology they follow right so as a functional consultant that's your guide for going into any project now when the organization decides their methodology there are three different approaches which are there one is agile methodology they can take the agile approach or they can tell they can take the waterfall or they can take the hybrid approach normally uh, uh, i mean no one is fully agile uh, nowadays which i have seen no uh, people are not following the waterfall and people are going in a hybrid manner right i have got a very good example of agile waterfall and hybrid uh, uh, methodology on the microsoft docs so i'm going to just quickly share you that uh, those examples so that it gives you the clear idea what's the agile methodology looks like and what waterfall methodology looks like and how the hybrid looks like uh now if you see my screen so this is the example of your uh, agile methodology uh, which you can choose right so agile methodology is 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 being in a iterative manner right so which means like when you try to, you break down your different milestones into a small small sprints and then you try to take the feedback on a continuous way and then try to achieve those small milestone rather than setting up a one bigger milestone so that's the agile methodology so this is just an example let's say in analysis phase if you start with project management uh, plan then you conduct the uh, solution review workshops and gather the requirements and then you analyze then do the fit gap and uh, identify your a uh, different solution uh, backlog or or the different types of requirement and then you define a 30 days sprint cycle so that specific pieces of the when you break down into small pieces of the work that's generally called as sprint right so that is like let's say 30 days sprint and which again have a daily sprint so by doing by following this process right you are getting a continuous uh, uh, feedback and you are uh, achieving a small small milestones towards your bigger goal i am not the project manager any project manager can explain it in a better way but uh, this is one of the example which you can see on the screen which gives you the idea about the agile 
now if i go to the <coughs> waterfall waterfall is basically you have your different phases now what you do is that you set the milestone of your uh, for each and every phase and once you are complete once you are done with those milestones and once you achieve those things then only you move to the next phase right so that that that's your waterfall strategy now the problem with this is that if you have completed your analysis phase and if you have not taken any feedback during the process and if you move to the design and if you get a lot of a uh, lot of feedbacks and a lot of changes then it is very difficult for you to move to the analysis phase again because that has already been executed so there are problems if you go uh, in a waterfall mode but then here comes your uh, your your hybrid process where there are few things which follows kind of a non iterative approach which is the non agile approach you can say so so you you do the mobilization initiation but you in a, in a specific area you try to follow the iterative approach the uh, the build phase let's say you do the first pick up a small set of requirements or the work and you do the analysis design development iteration testing and then you is again uh, again again for again repeat the same process so that's the another uh, approach a uh, lot of people have where they follow the hybrid approach which is a uh, iterative plus non iterative both which means the agile plus somewhat the waterfall methodology which you have it so now uh, i hope you understand that any methodology or organization is following right you can think of that is it is it a pure agile methodology or waterfall or the hybrid in my opinion in my experience it is most of the times it's a hybrid methodology okay the next one is now we understand uh, by the microsoft recommended uh, success by design implementation guide what are the different phases what are the major activities which we do and the, what are the major reviews we do right then to execute those phases what uh, we need a methodology and why we need the methodology how it can uh, help us in executing our project that is what we discuss and then what are the different types of methodologies which are available uh, in in different i mean which are followed by different organizations right so this this gives you a very 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 good idea about that when you get into a project as a functional consultant you should know what are the different phases and to execute those phases what is the methodology your organization is following now the next thing which comes we all know that microsoft dynamics 365 projects are executed through a tool which is called as lcs life cycle services tool right so most of the things which we which we perform right it is in the lcs now lcs also has the similar phases like analysis design develop deploy and operate but lcs also guides us that in each and every phase what are the different types of activities you are going to perform so that is also called as methodology so you can take that as an input and see that what are the different milestones or the major activities you need to perform during those phases as per the lcs so i'm going to show you one small uh, uh demo about the lcs so how it looks and lcs we are going to talk about this tool in detail in one of the session because it's a very important tool for anyone as a functional consultant who are working on any project for dynamics 365 at least so now if you see it uh, on my screen uh, this is the lcs portal you can log in uh, with your credentials if you are working for any organization and here i have chosen a one of the implementation methodology now this methodology if you see it gives you the different phases but what it also what it also helps you to understand that in each and every phase what are the activities you are going to perform as part of your project as well as from the lcs perspective because we all know that to 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 execute any dynamics 365 project you need to configure your or you need to get your lcs uh, portal in in place so it it has a mix of activities which is lcs activities as well as your project activities but definitely all these activities are going to follow the methodology which your organization is following so if i talk about analysis it says that you need to uh, do the complete lcs configuration invite your project team uh, deploy your different environments do the business requirement and the process capturing fit gap analysis and 
uh, subscription estimator. So it, it has a different, uh, different activities in the design and develop from the functional perspective. Let's say you do the FDD writing, you do the test cases, test uh, scripts, uh, and, and then you go to the uh, test phase, the, you go to the deploy phase and the operate phase. We are going to talk about each and every activity as a functional consultant that out of these activity, what are the activities which as a functional consultant I'm going to perform and then how I'm going to perform this in my project. So I'm going to talk about all these things, but it is for you to just and give an idea that when you get into the project as a functional consultant, then what exactly you are supposed to do right how the holistic view in an implementation project looks like and what you should know as a functional consultant when you get into the project uh, from your organization <clears throat> that's it for uh, this video i'm going to start with now a first phase as a analysis phase and i'm going to talk about that the one of the first activity as a functional consultant you are going to perform in this analysis phase how do you perform that? What document you prepare and, and how, how, how you can do it uh, better as a functional consultant. So no product demos or nothing, but it will be more about sharing my experience and the tools and the techniques which I have learned in my experience. So that's it for this particular video. Uh, uh, I, I think it is going to help not only the Dynamics 365 finance and operation consultant, but it is going to help any ERP consultant uh, who is going to work as a functional consultant, CRM, Business Central, or maybe SAP or Oracle or any ERP consultant who, are going, who is going to execute the uh, implementation project as functional consultant, it is going to help you out. So that's it. Uh, if you have any uh, feedback, any suggestion, uh, please uh, put in a comment box. I am going to take that and try to uh, try to try to act on that. Uh, I I I I was very confused about that. How I'm going to how I should uh, uh, start this series, and how should I present by consolidating uh, different artifacts or the materials which we have uh, 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 on the internet or my experience. So this is the first one. Uh, I will uh, try to improve it in the next videos and try to present in a more articulative way as much as possible from my uh, my perspective. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Uh, 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 enjoy your day and thank you.